on, say, God, reach inside of me and bring out the hour of my best. Something is going to be quickened in your mortal body. Something is going to be quickened in the mental state. Something's going to be quickened in the belly of your belief. How many are ready for that? Just like when you take an antibiotic, you don't know how it happens. Don't ask me. They say take it twice a day. I do what the doctor says. Don't have a clue how it's working on me. But I know it's working. When you take this by faith today, it's going to begin a new thing. We are going up to a new level. Are we not? Yes. Need a little cooperation. Are we going up to a new level? Yes. Thank you very much. A little early, I know, but we're going up together. Amen? Amen. Together, reinforced by the power of God.
Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. The hour of your best or the hour of your worst. Jesus in the setting of this chapter is speaking. Now I want to draw you into the setting. The 12 disciples were there. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. Mary Magdalene was there. And it's only six days away from the crucifixion. In six days, he's going to be crucified. So it's very fair to say today that they were feeling the anxiety of the hour because it was the end time of the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ upon this earth. They were getting ready to understand his words when he said, if you destroy this temple in three days, I'm going to raise it up again. Jesus had given them indication all along. I'm not going to be here long. I'm with you now, but I shall be in you. I go away to prepare a place for you. And as Jesus Christ is speaking, they feel the pressure, the anxiety of the moment. Here I go. There is a woman by the name of Mary. And Mary is sitting in that room that day. And as Jesus is speaking, nobody knows that she's got an alabaster box. Nobody knows what's getting ready to happen. But as Jesus is speaking, something starts happening on the inside of this lady. Now remember, six days away from Calvary, the end time is upon them. They feel it, but nobody knew what was about to happen. And out 
of nowhere, Mary stands up and takes that alabaster box of very precious ointment. And something is turning in the side of her. And she says, I got to worship him. I got to praise him. I got to do something I've never done before. I want to give God, I want to pour out my praise on him. He's done so much for me. I feel him. I want to get close to him. I want to honor him. I want to worship him. I want to praise him. I want to get closer. I want to go deeper. I want to get higher. I've got to do something like I've never done. And with nobody realizing what was going on, Mary took that alabaster box of ointment. And the Bible said that she went up to Jesus and she began to she broke that alabaster box and when she broke that alabaster box then she began to weep and she began to cry the Bible said that she washed his feet with her tears and she dried them with her hair she said God I want to take my highest and take it to your lowest I want to do something like I've never done. I want to worship you like I've never worshipped you. I want to praise you. God, I want to do something. Oh, Lord, I feel it inside of me. And I've got to praise you. I've got to worship you. I've got to honor you. I've got to love you. I've got to get closer to you. I've got to feel you more. I want to walk in your anointing like never before. But in the same room, hearing the same voice, feeling the same anxiety, the Bible said that Judas Iscariot, it's right there in your book, I read it to you, that Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest to betray him. Look at me. I want you to get this because God's given this church a word today. And it's simply this. That the end time of that hour brought the best out of Mary but brought the worst out of Judas Iscariot. I don't know why God changed my message today. I don't know why. He said, leave your notebook here, but I want you to go to that pulpit and I want you to open up Oh, Matthew chapter 26 and I'm going to give you the words and I hear the words coming to me right now that the end time of that hour brought the best out of one and brought the worst out of another and what God sent me here today to deposit into this church as we're moving at this new level as we're going from height to height and from depth to depth God sent me to tell you that it's going to be some of the hours of your best it's going to be some of the hours of somebody else's worst that's that's a nice man right there that's a good man right there I, I can just tell it but you didn't have a you didn't have a name on so I didn't know your name and I don't know anybody's name here and I don't, I don't know anybody that's ever left this church I'm just being honest with you I, I really don't I don't know any saints that's in this church that's not, but I can tell you by the spirit that there are people there are empty seats that may be spread around this building today that you could have took me to five years ago and said, now, you know, Pastor Tim, sitting right here was what I thought was the backbone of this church. And sitting right here, I never thought they would ever leave the church. I never thought they would ever walk out the doors, but something happened. And, 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 and they left the church. And, you know, they talked about pastor and they talked about people in the church. And, man, you could have, I mean, if you'd have put a gun to my head five years ago, I would have told you that's no way possible that isn't ever going to happen. So why did it happen? Why, what happened? I'm going to show you today. The, uh, I, I need a, somebody in my life to get me a little more organized and things. And, and uh, but because sometimes I forget to go to the store and, you know, and, and sometimes my, my, my toothpaste runs low. And, and so uh, I, I squeeze it and, 
and, and sometimes I hadn't got there quite yet. You know what I'm talking about? And I, I stick my thumb up in the bottom of it because I, I put it on the edge of the sink and I, I do it like that and then I, I roll that thing all the way up. And y'all, y'all don't get mad at me and think I'm crazy, but sometimes I even suck on it. I get my thumb up in it and I, I suck the last little bit out of it. You know what I'm talking about? I, I, I get it all. Oh, yeah, come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. <clears throat> but you see what I'm talking about? But it doesn't matter. I could take that, that little tube of toothpaste I've got of Caress right now, and, and I could take it out to the interstate, 75. Isn't that 75 out there? And I could lay that, that, that tube on the interstate, and I could let every 18-wheeler from Miami to Tampa run over the top of that toothpaste. And you know what's going to come out? toothpaste if they, if it's down in the crevices it's going to reach in and, and get it out some way you see pressure does not reveal something that's not in there oh lord did you hear what I said somebody said oh that person you know they got into a tough situation they got into a pressurized situation and it caused them to react like normally they wouldn't react oh no 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 you got to understand that pressure doesn't bring something up that's not down in there all pressure does is reach inside and to and take the hidden things that they've camouflaged, that they've pushed down. And you're looking and said, oh, they're great. But all of a sudden they start doing things and acting in certain ways. And you're saying, my God, what happened? Somebody must have done something to them or somebody said something. Or they, they've been put in a situation and they're acting like they normally wouldn't act. No, it's just we're living in an hour that we've never lived in before. And the pressure's greater than it's ever been before. And that's the reason why we're having revival we're saying God search my heart God if there's anything in me that's not right reach in and get it out so don't you get don't you get upset and don't you get worried when you see people responding that you go oh my God I can't believe that that, that, whoa, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, the hour of your best or the hour of your worst. You could hide it before, but now there's more pressure than there's ever been before. The devil's working overtime right now. I said the devil's working overtime right now because he knows what's already happening in this place. He knows that the level is rising. Did you hear what I said? I said he knows that the level is rising. Oh. Lord have mercy. I'm telling you, I'm preaching this morning. I may not have a fog machine and the lights may be on and I may not even have any notes to go by, but God said, I want you to go in there and tell them folk today that it's the hour of their best or it's the hour of their worst. So what will this hour bring out of you? I said, what will this hour bring out of you? I said, what will this hour bring out of you? Is it going to bring out the spirit of Mary or is it going to bring out the spirit of Judas? Somebody needs to understand today why we can look across this building and we can see different ones that used to be here that they're gone they're gone they're gone and we're saying God why because the hour it brought out their worse but I got some good news for you even though some people may be leaving somebody else is coming hallelujah and God says hey it may be that person's worse but I'm gonna reach in and take that person that's been on the outside of the ark of safety they're going to make their way back come on don't sit around and say what is she doing back what's he doing back I'll tell you what they're doing back it's the hour of their best it's the hour of their best oh shaka talarabori anamai there's going to be people walking in this building that you're going to go, whoa, where did they come from? I can't believe they're back. I can't believe he's here. I can't believe she's here. You know why they're here? Because it's the hour of their best. And God is saying, get back in. Oh, Lord. Don't you look around. Don't you look around and say, I wish they wasn't here. Because if you start that kind of spirit, it's going to be the hour of your worst. I said, it's going to be the hour of your worst. What you need to be saying is, God, bring reconciliation. God, do a work in this house. God, put family.
families back together. God, take our church to the next level. Come on. There's a lot of preachers that are quitting today. Did you hear me? There's a lot of pe- preachers that just get upset and they can't take it anymore. I read a news article the other day. There's more clergymen that's getting out of the ministry than ever before. There's churches that are sitting down everywhere. You know why? Because it's the hour of their worst. It's the hour that the pressure didn't bring out the best. The pressure brought out the worst. But don't sit around your house and say, what happened to that man? What happened to that woman? What happened to that daughter? I can't believe they quit. Can't believe they resigned. It may be the worst for some people, but God's going to reach in and God God's going to bring people up like Lynn Bracco. That's going to stand and say, God, it's not going to be the hour of my worst. It's going to be the hour of my best. I'm going to another level. I'm going to another level. Come on. Do you want this hour to drive you to the hour of your best or the hour? I'll give him a hand clap of praise right now. What are you feeling? What's in, what's, in, what's in your spirit? Are you saying, God, I want to get to that next level. God, I want to move up higher. God, I want your spirit. God, I want your power. God, I want your anointing. Are you finding yourself? saying, I wonder if I can miss church and be all right. I wonder if I can not give in the offering and be all right. I wonder if I can just do this and get by. Are you finding yourself trying to see how much you can get by with? Are you trying to see how closer you can get to the cross? There was an emperor in China who had no sons. He could not decide who to turn the kingdom over to. One day a flood came and washed out a bridge. He had two prime ministers who he was contemplating on turning the kingdom over to. So he turned to the first prime minister and said, go to this road where this road is washed out. It's the only road that gets to the palace, so see what you can do. We don't want anybody dying, driving off in this water. So he went and came back and told the prime minister, I've done all I can do. I'm saving people's lives. The prime minister went and there erected in front of this big washed out road with all this water was a sign that said road washed out. The prime minister said, that's all you can do? He said, that's all I can do. He turned to the second prime minister and said, you go. See what you'll do about the flood. Man went down there, looked at the sign Studied it for a moment. Went back and got wood, saws, hammers, and nails. And he built a bridge over that washed out road. He turned that sign around that said road washed out. And he put an arrow and said this way to the palace. What I want to ask you in Fort Myers this morning is what are you doing? Building barricades? Or bridges. Are you saying it can't be done, won't be done? Are you saying, go ahead, devil, you work your stuff. But when we get through, we're going to turn it around and say this way to the palace. I'm not trying to find a reason to quit. I'm not trying to find a reason for failure. I've come to tell you that God is God. And God's about to raise up a generation of people that's going to turn Lee County upside down. God's about to raise up a generation. God's about to raise up a church in this city that's going to be so mighty and powerful. But the question I have for you, are you going to be a part of it? The question I have for you, is it going to be the hour of your best? Or is it going to be the hour of your worst? Search your heart. 
See, David said, God, search my heart and see. Maybe there's something I don't even realize it's in there. Oh, God, this is going to be a day that we're going to cleanse ourselves and get everything out so that the pressure don't bring something out that's been hidden inside of us. God, if there's any spirit of rebellion, get it out of me right now. If there's any spirit of distrust in my church or about my pastor, God, get it out right now. God, if there's any questions about anything in my life, God, search it right now because I feel a Mary spirit. I want to say, God, uh, nobody knew that Mary had it. She did something nobody had ever done. She took a year's wages. That's what was there. And she said, God, I'm just going to give it to you. I don't understand. Oh, I, God, here it is. God, I give it all. God, I worship you. There are some of you that you're surprised at your wife or you're surprised at your husband. And you're saying, I've never seen you be so faithful. I've never seen you worship so much. I've never seen you give so much. I know it, baby. I don't know what's going on. There's just something inside of me that's saying I got to do more. There's just something inside of me that's saying I got to get closer. It's the hour of my best. It's the hour of my best. But oh, let me reach those folks today that the enemy has set a plot for you. Let me reach those people today that the enemy's plan on tripping you up and making you bitter and making you distrustful and making you get to the place that you say, I'm just going to quit church. Don't don't let it be the hour of your worst. Don't let it be an hour that you give the kiss of betrayal. But let it be an hour that says, draw me nearer to the cross. Draw me nearer, precious Lord. It may be your worst, but it's my best. God's give us too many words in this house. He said, whatever we loose shall be loose. Whatever we bind shall be bound. And I lift my sign today and just say yes. Come on, everybody lift your sign and say, just say yes. Just say yes. Do you want it to be the hour of your best? Yes. Do you want it to be the hour of your best?